Hello there, ghouls and gals. Welcome back to The Crash Hub. I am Kayla with Cafe Crashdown, and today we are talking about season 14, episode five, Dot and Bubble for the new season of Doctor Who. So let's roll the intro. Welcome back, my dudes. I am so excited to talk about this episode. So this episode to me is what I've been waiting for with this new season of Doctor Who. We've gotten a a nice spectrum of different episodes, kind of a different variety, trying to pull in this new audience uh, that we now have, this kind of with this fresh reboot of Doctor Who. But this episode to me, it was finally taking me back to one of the reasons that I really enjoy Doctor Who. There are many, but uh, this episode was so fun to me. So listen, we're not going to wait. We're just going to jump right in. So if you don't mind, please, would you give me a like for this video? Hit subscribe if you definitely want to be part of the Crash Hub journey. We talk about things that are horror and sci-fi. I'm going to be putting out more content about the latest horror news going on, which man, it is wild right now. There's so much coming out that it's it's really hard to keep up, to be honest, but I'm doing my best. So <laughs> trying to get that out. I'm gonna have my top five Shutter favorites every month where I'm gonna talk about my favorite, some of my favorite picks for the month uh, on the streaming platform Shutter. If you like movie reviews, TV show reviews, if you just like talking about different things about the subgenres of horror and sci-fi, you're gonna love Cafe Crashdown. So definitely hit that subscribe button ring that bell so you don't miss it when we put out a new video. But enough of that, enough of that. Let's get into this episode. So I've been trying to decide if I want to do like a step-by-step breakdown, but I do feel, as I've said in previous videos, you guys have already seen this episode. So I'm going to try to steer clear from doing like a step-by-step of actually what happened in this episode. Just, I just don't think you need a breakdown. So let's talk about this overall vibe that we have in this world that we're in. We have these teenagers or young people from ages, I think they said 17 to 27, who have been sent to this planet and they work two hours a day and then they just party the rest of the time. And these are spoiled youngins, okay? Mommy and daddy had a lot of money. They were able to send their child to this new planet. And so all of these kids, are are rich, are spoiled, and are just totally immersed in this world. And they have this bubble system that goes around their head that they access to. Yes, the cats are back. They always make an appearance, don't they? And so with this uh, AI system, uh, sentient system, it is keeping everybody in contact constantly. So you have like your screen in front of you, it's very like Blade Runner and some of these other sci-fi films that you've seen that kind of like shows this like interface, right? Or in the peripheral, it's kind of the same thing. And so you have like all of your friends and people that you wanna keep in contact with right in front of you and you can like swipe and talk to that person and everything is solely engaged through the phone or the system. I say phone because that's what I'm used to now, which is the whole analogy that we're faced in this episode. But um, you, you have the screen that's constantly circulating all of this information. And I mean, it's even to the point that like you, you are told when to pee right? You were told when you need to go pee, you were told how to walk and like where to go because people have these screens up constantly. It's, it, I got the impression that you go to bed, you don't have the screen, but as soon as you wake up, what do you do? You turn on the screen, which how many of us are laying in bed and then it's one of the first things we do when we wake up is we pull that phone and we check it. It's something that I personally have been trying to work on, but I'm, I'm struggling with it. And I think that's one of the themes of this. I think there's many things going on in this episode, but 
One of the things they're really trying to hammer in there is this dependency on our phones, how it's literally become a part of us, right? It's, we can't go anywhere without our phones. I feel naked when I don't have my phone on me and I feel unsafe and that's crazy, right? Like when you really think about it, that's insane that like we have got to that point and the ease of access of information, keeping in contact. There's a lot of pros and cons to this, of course, but so the having a phone with us at all times. And the other thing that I really got uh, that was similar to me in this, um, that was similar to me when I was watching this episode was Wally, right? When Wally, the little robot in the Disney movie, he's gone on to, gosh, I haven't seen it in a while. So I'm, I'm assuming it's like a spaceship or no, it's earth. It's, it's, it's a planet. It's earth. I think it's, again, it's been a long time, but the people, right. The people who are overweight and they're just constantly like drinking the little, their little slurpees and they have the screens in front of them. And they literally are looking at these screens all the time, engaging. And it's when the one gets kind of knocked out of his chair and he's not looking at the screen anymore that he's like looking around and he's really seeing what's going on around him. And it's the same situation here with Lindy, which we will talk about. But once she removes that screen and she sees what's going on in real life, it's it's like a whole new world, right? It's crazy. And so I, I got that same kind of similar thing. And it's just kind of that, there's that importance of us needing to tap out being away from our phones, being away from the screens. I shouldn't be saying this as a YouTuber, but I am <laughs> like making sure to make time for immersing yourself in the real world, immersing yourself in nature, immersing yourself in a book, right? Uh, that was when we met Ricky September. That's what he was doing. He was like, she was like, why are you such a good walker? Because freaking Lindy can't even walk because she had a, AI telling her how to walk, like walk forward, turn left, you know? And so Ricky was able to get her out of the situation. And she's like, how do you walk so good? And he's like, well, I do my songs for the dot, right? And for the bubble. And then after I'm done, I turn off my bubble and I just like go for a walk and I read and, you know, I just live in the moment. And so it was definitely hinting at that, like that's what we need to be doing. I am a freelance web designer and digital designer by trade. And I have a problem with being on my screen all the time. And so I really have to make myself get up, go out eat, and go for a walk. Even if it's for like 15 or 20 minutes, just to like stretch my legs, get some fresh air. Luckily I can work from home. So I'm able to like go into my yard when it's a nice day, get some fresh air, do a little bit of gardening. So then that way I can like really ground myself and get rooted into the earth before I have to go back to, back to my screen, right? So it's that same kind of concept. So we have this going on where people are being eaten on this planet. Um, and at first, we're not really sure why they're eating these people. And then we find out there's a list and it's alphabetical order. My first thought initially was like, oh my God, the parents sent their bratty ass kids to this planet just to have them devoured. Like, take them over, take take care of them. <laughs> We're done with them. So at first I was like, maybe the parents are the bad guys here because they're kind of terrible. Uh, but then of course we find out that the parents' planet has also been completely annihilated. So, and then we find out that it's actually the AI that has literally thought like these people are terrible. We can't take this anymore, this constant, uh, with them that we're just going to kill them. So the AI grew these creatures and these creatures are devouring these people. So I thought that was really funny. I really enjoyed that touch. So yeah, then we had moments where, you know, when Lindy is not wearing the bubble and she hugs Ricky September for the first time and he was holding his hand for the first time, this human interaction and really telling of how important human interaction is. We all experienced this with COVID. We were all separated from each other when we had constant interaction. Well, I wouldn't say constant, but more, more interaction with friends and family. And then we were forced to be separated. We've seen cases with this with children who were brought up during this time that how it's really affected them socially. And so the 
the importance of physical touch and physical interaction, how important that is to a society and to development. So the doctor and Ruby, everybody seems to have a crush on Ricky September, which he's such a good guy. This whole, like his time in this episode, I was like, oh, Ricky, like you're looking out for Lindy and you know, um, he, he's going out of his way to help her. He's got the codes, you know, going down. Like he just seemed like an all around decent person in this world and freaking Lindy, man, I have some names for her that I cannot say on YouTube, but what the heck? Why? Why, Lindy? Wow. Wow. Doing that to Ricky, that was just, that was low blow. Super low blow. Just unnecessary, which some people can argue like, yes, well, in the survival situation, you got to do what you got to do. This is like the argument with Shane and Rick and The Walking Dead. Listen, we can get into the whole that. Let me just tell you about this with Shane because people are like, oh, yeah, but like Shane would have done so much better in this apocalypse. Like, you know, if he wouldn't have been shot or, you know, whatever, he wouldn't have been. Yeah, shot. He wouldn't have been shot by Rick, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, but the whole point is he did die. So he didn't survive. Rick did. See what I'm saying here? So sorry, that's totally not relevant to the conversation. But so some people may argue that, you know, hey, Lindy's just she's a survivalist. She's got to survive and she wasn't going to see any benefit for or any way for them both to survive. So let's just throw Ricky September under the bus. I think there could have been ways for them to survive, but whatever. So then Lindy gets out of that situation and she finds the doctor and Ruby in real life because they had been talking to her through a screen, her, her, her bubble system. I'm just trying to help them get out of here. And yeah, this whole scene was so good. Absolute chef's kiss, man. So this whole scene that goes down when Lindy gets to the river, right? And um, she meets up with the people who are getting out of this city. They're going into the great wilderness, right? They're going to be pioneers and stuff like that. The doctor offers them. He's like, I've got a TARDIS. Like, I can take you. I can take you all. It's bigger than what it looks like. I can take you all wherever you want to go to where there's a place that's safe and has everything that you need. And they tell him no. And they just degrade him. They're like, you're not one of us. You're this like weird being and you're not of our status. And no, we're not going with you and your mad magician's box. Like you can get the heck out of here. And I was so, I mean, coming from Lindy, I wasn't surprised because especially what she did to Ricky, I was like, oh, that's, that sounds like her. But the fact that they all said that and had the same mindset, I was like, no wonder this freaking AI system was like, let's kill these bitches. Cause man, rude. Oh, they were terrible. So it is what it is. But what I loved about the scene besides that was I'm not going to say his name because I'm going to butcher it, but the actor who plays the doctor, wow, this, this was such a nice reaction and it was subtle. Like he didn't even have that many lines, but you felt his frustration and the, it's like the agony of knowing that these people are going to their deaths that he can't save them. And yet, and also just this mindset that they have, is just, it was, it's disgusting. And so there's, but his main frustration why he's upset is he's wanting to save these people and he knows they're being stupid and literally just going to their deaths. And so all of this has been for nothing really, because let's be real, they're, they're going to die. Like they're terrible. They don't know what they're doing or how to take care of themselves. It's a whole thing. So I, I was really impressed by even the short moment, the acting of the doctor. Like it just, it was so good. It was so good. And, and throughout this episode, again, I love the interaction between the doctor and Ruby. I'm really enjoying them as a team. 
Um, Ruby seems to be such a complimentary companion to him. Their personalities just fit really well. They have some really great and cute interactions, even when they disagree with each other. And I, I am just, I'm totally on board. So this episode has just, was really good. It's going to be one of those that I actually do want to rewatch, uh, because I know there's going to be some other little things here and there that didn't pick up. Oh, let's talk about Susan Twist. Susan Twist showed up. Oh, Susan Twist, Susan Twist. We talked about her in the last video, how the actor, the actress, Susan Twist has been showing up in every single episode of this new season and also in the 60th episode, she did make an appearance. And so there's something about this actress and why does she keep showing up? And then of course, now finally, the doctor and Ruby acknowledged this as well. They were also like, hey, isn't that the woman that was on that planet? And wasn't she like the AI system? Wasn't she the ambulance? And oh, wasn't she did it? And then they were like, oh, we can't talk about this right now. We got to talk about other things. So now they're acknowledging it. So now it's like, if you haven't noticed it before, now we're telling you, you need to start noticing it. So we got Susan Twist premiere. So we'll see. We'll see. I would love to hear from you guys. If you st still like what your theories are about Susan Twist, who do you think she is? Is she, is she Ruby's mom? Is she Ruby herself? Is she the one that's coming that the maestro and the toy maker have been foretelling that's going to come and, you know, basically take over things, be the big bad, right? Be the big bad of the season. Uh, I would love to know your thoughts on that. Is, is she um, his daughter? You know, like fun things like that. So I would love to hear your thoughts on Susan. So that is it with us today. I wanted to keep it as short as possible and just kind of talk about some of the themes of this. I thought it was so relevant. The thing that I had heard about this episode, it was actually written a couple seasons ago by Russell, but they didn't have it in the budget to be able to do this type of episode right. So they finally had it for this and being with Disney. So he was able to make the script come alive and, uh, I think that this was a good fit with this doctor and this companion doing this script, doing this storyline. Um, and I think it's even more relevant now. It was definitely relevant then, but I think it's becoming even more relevant now, especially with the rise of AI in our society. So I, yeah, I think this is a incredibly relevant episode. It gave me the sci-fi that I needed, gave me the, oh, Lindy, like you're terrible and all of that stuff. And just giving me, oh, my heart moments for the doctor. So please let me know in the comments what you thought about this episode. How do, do you feel that it is stacking up compared to the other episodes of the season? Are you feeling like it's progressing and getting really good? Do you feel like this kind of fell compared to other episodes? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, please. And if you haven't, please, please, please like this video, hit subscribe and ring that bell because again, I'm going to be coming out with more content that I would love for you to hang out with me and check out and learn all about. So I hope you guys have a super awesome cosmic week and I will see you later.